with the latest era of Doctor Who coming to an end, I think that a lot of fans are thankful it's over and happy to see Russell T Davies return as showrunner. Russell Boy was the original showrunner for the reboot back in 2005 and made Doctor Who what it is today. These four seasons of television were my entire childhood. Yeah, my grandma may beat my ass, but at least on Saturdays, Doctor Who and his quirky companion would be there to kiss it better. And one of the main reasons for this was David Tennant. His performance as the Doctor will forever go down as one of the most charismatic characters ever on screen. He seems to just be enjoying every moment of it, which is how it should be for a story about an alien who travels through time and space. He perfectly captures the wonder of it all. Because as everyday people, that sounds like a dream come true. You can go anywhere, do anything, and so this character should be upbeat and friendly. But besides just that, David Tennant killed the more tragic side of the character too. The loneliness that comes with immortality, the anger at people who do the wrong things, and his look is iconic. If you happen to be wearing a brown suit and you accidentally step in dog shit and so you have to instead wear white trainers, it's done, that's your life now. You have to go and pick up a quirky companion and go travel through time and space, it's not my fault, it's just how it is. And over his run as Doctor, the number of engaging side characters was uncountable. Torchwood, Captain Jack, Prime Minister Lady, uh, this spiky thing. So when it was time for David Tennant to go, it felt like he really left an impact on the series, despite not even coming in until season two. Christopher Eccleston, who is fantastic as well, left. And so David Tennant came in to replace him. But what's crazy is that, in my opinion, David Tennant's on-screen chemistry with his companion, Rose, is better than Christopher Eccleston's, who it was originally intended for. And then they stuck the landing. When it was time for Tennant to go, it was executed perfectly. No loud dramatic action scene, as he sacrifices himself for the greater good by taking out a bunch of bad guys. He does sacrifice himself, but just to save one sweet old boy. It's a somber quiet moment between the two, and Tennant's last words are heartbreaking. I don't wanna go. See, we're thinking the exact same thing, and so it's as though he's speaking directly to us. I cried myself to sleep that night. Too upset to even bust a small nut. And so, after Stephen Moffat and David Tennant left, Matt Smith came in to take over the role. And yes, it was different, but I still really enjoyed it. It didn't try and recreate what came before, because it was never going to be what it was before. It's changed hands, and it feels that way from the start taking a bit more of a focus on an overarching story. And I'm glad Matt Smith is finally getting his dues, with his portrayal in House of the Dragon and that one Morbin movie being critically acclaimed. However, once Peter Capaldi came in, I was starting to check out. The stories became more and more generic and somehow overly confusing at the same time. The classic villains were starting to get recycled, with the series' most iconic foes popping up every episode until they became overused and lost any resemblance of fear and intimidation they once held. But there were still some good episodes sprinkled in, you know. So all was not lost. But then, as soon as Peter Capaldi left and Jodie Whittaker became the new Doctor, it went so off the rails that it felt like a parody of what the show once was. There was so much drama about a woman becoming the Doctor, but who even cares if the scripts and the story are awful? That's the biggest issue. Jodie Whittaker is an incredible actress, but at the end of the day, she can only deliver the lines that are given to her, so she was pretty much doomed from the start. And so I kind of gave up with Doctor Who, left it as a happy childhood memory I once had stored away up here. I'd still pop in from time to time, but every time I did, I would regret it. But then, like a light in the darkness, it was announced that Russell T Davies would be returning as showrunner. And not only that, the incredibly charismatic Shorty Gatwa would be the new Doctor, and I can't think of a better pick. His only prominent role so far has been sex education, but he has so much range in that show, doing incredible in both the light-hearted scenes and the emotional scenes. Why are you so angry? Because we've been friends since we were nine years old and you've abandoned me for someone that you've known for five seconds. And not only that, but David Tennant and Catherine Tate will be returning for a big old special. For the first time in over a decade, I was excited about Doctor Who again and I still am. And so, after this news broke, I was pretty interested in seeing the final special with Jodie Whittaker, where it was announced that she will be leaving. It was a given that 
she would regenerate at some point in the episode, and I wanted to see if we'd get a glimpse of Gatwa's doctor when she did. And when there was only a few minutes left, I was almost certain that they'd disappoint me one last time, cutting the episode off as she begins regenerating. But no, a suit begins to appear and I thought, okay, nice. So we are gonna get a look at Gatwa, all dripped out, rocking a suit. And then I was completely taken off guard when David Tennant popped up. And then even more taken back when we got a promo for the upcoming special, both the upcoming 14th Doctor and David Tennant's Doctor. So yeah, I'm not sure why, but I had it in my head that this special was going to be either a flashback episode with Tennant or maybe um, just an untold story from that era, you know, when Donna was his companion. But now, it seems as though it's going to focus on David Tennant, sort of passing the torch onto Gatwa's Doctor. And honestly, I can't think of a better actor to do it. And from the 10 second promo alone, that old Doctor Who feeling just went right back into me. The directing looks crisp. Look how beautiful this looks. Look at it. Look at them. Look at them, me Javi. Hey! <gasps> I feel like if you're someone who's uh, not as familiar with pre Whitaker Doctor Who, then it will be hard to understand where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about. But I'm just so excited, and I had to make a video on this because I've just watched that episode, and all those uh, feelings, you know, they're still rattling around in my mind. If you are a fan of the Whitaker era, then um, I completely understand, you know, like everyone has different tastes, and that's what makes this fun. It was such a wonderful, happy, significant time in my life, uh, and, and you move on from it with. Uh, a whole mixture of emotions uh, and, and one of those is, is sadness and regret so to be able to revisit that and to get another another shot it's uh, it's it was an, uh, a total joy from start to finish. If you want to see me do any more Doctor Who content, um, maybe some big deep dives into single episodes or just uh, some general kooky crazy videos, then leave a comment below. I think a really interesting episode to focus on would be The Girl in the Fireplace. That's the one with the uh, gizmo boys and the horse jumping through the glass and probably the saddest ending for any TV episode ever. Thank you for 300 subs, that's honestly lovely. Everyone, all the comments, amazing. You guys are sweet peas. So I'm currently working on a, a massive deep dive into every episode of another amazing British show, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. It's basically just murder puppets, but there's a lot more to it than that. It gets insanely trippy and psychological and kind of similar to The Matrix in a way, which I was just not expecting from you know, a puppet show. But I'm very excited to put it out. Uh, thank you again for watching. I love you. Goodbye.